We cannot comprehend life without plankton. They are so simple in their form, but they are so complex in what they are doing. When preparing a slide of a drop of water uh, under a microscope, it doesn't seem that this drop of water will have anything inside until we put our eyes in the eyepiece and it's totally different universe in there. It's just like staring at the space, staring at the stars. My name is Mazin Shafi. I'm a technician at KAUST, currently in a mission to study plankton and ocean explorer. Plankton are microscopic organisms. They are considered the base of the food chain in the ocean. Every organism in the ocean is directly or indirectly dependent on them for food and for other processes. One drop of water can contain thousands of different organisms. I'm from Saudi Arabia. I grew up in a city called Dammam, close to the Arabian Gulf. We used to throw our lines in the, in the ocean and try to guess what species is this. I loved it. Each one of them has their own characteristics that makes them amazing. Eyes usually draw into things that are obvious. But how about the things that we cannot see by our eyes? This is the main drive that led me to studying plankton that there are many things that we don't see that control our life. And by understanding them, we could understand the things that we see. There are two general group of plankton. They are either zooplankton, which are animal-like plankton, and there's phytoplankton, which is plant-like plankton. In this expedition, we are trying to do a comprehensive survey for the whole Red Sea, from the southern point to the most upper point. We're trying to have a good understanding of how the plankton community in the Red Sea, what is the abundance, the distribution, and the biomass. The Red Sea is very unique in terms of temperature and salinity and low nutrient Although it looks very vibrant and full of life in the shores, in the deep water, it's a completely different story. It's almost like a desert. Organisms in this environment develop their own way of surviving. They, they have their own adaptations. What makes the plankton in the Red Sea very unique is that they are very efficient in their uh, utilization of the nutrient in the area. Wow, look, <laughs> this is a polychaete uh, larvae. It's a, a worm larvae, so, wow. Everything under the slide is moving. And uh, probably there is thousands of plankton that living in this small drop of water. It is surprising that all this life can exist in the Red Sea. But when the base of the food chain is, is strong, then the rest of the pyramid is capable of surviving. 2.5 billion years ago, there was no oxygen on Earth. It was full of carbon dioxide. One of the only creature that was able to survive was cyanobacteria, which is a type of plankton. And they survived by taking up CO2 from the atmosphere and producing oxygen. Oh, here it is. This is the cyanobacteria. Uh, cyanobacteria are one of the most dominant species in the Red Sea, especially uh, the northern part. So 
the amount of oxygen that is currently available in the atmosphere is all due to historic production of oxygen. It's like owing your life to a microscopic organism. Plankton are the reason the atmosphere is formed this way. We cannot comprehend life without plankton being at the beginning. In the recent years, we're thinking that terrestrial plants are having the majority of the effect on, on the atmosphere and fixing CO2. But after studying plankton, now we know that they have at least the same effect as the forest in producing oxygen. Plankton actually involved in at least 50% of the photosynthesis that happened on Earth. And some other data suggests that it's up to 80%. So the majority of the CO2 is being captured by the plankton that are in the ocean. We need to understand that understanding the world around us is an essential goal for us and for our children. It's just wonderful to have the chance to stare at this amazing universe every day.